I need help, boss. He stands up and says it louder. He goes, I have a really big penis. We're the NSAA. We're never serious about anything except grip ball. <laughs> I have drifted an aircraft carrier. What? To an extent. But you'd be out there alone as fuck. Just alone <laughs> people by osmosis of dopeness. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Two. One. We're gone. Welcome, everybody. This is the Happy Hoodlums podcast. I got my co-host, Zach Sampson, the almighty down there. And then we have Gabe Blakey, my homie from high school. He's back. And we were actually just chopping it up about um, some film stuff because that's one of the things that he's into. And in particular, with last week's guest, Timmy. And so the the stories about Timmy can come out now. I'm sure it won't be anything terrible like how me and Timmy became friends. Because I like, long story short, I punched Timmy in the face and he never snitched on me. So we became like best <laughs> friends. So he's probably got a less eventful story. But yeah, this is something about Timmy. Well, Timmy's a ride or die, that's for sure. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, no, uh, we had a uh, film class. Uh, he was a, I think he was a grade younger than me as well. Um, so yeah, he, we were in a film class, like my junior year and, uh, it was just, you know, an easy credit or whatever. That's why I was in there. But, um, mm -hmm. we, we had to create some like original student project and Timmy just totally like led the way on creating this, um, uh, it was just like a cr like a crime, like kidnapping story. It was ridiculous. <laughs> it was so funny. We were hanging out in like the, the park outside of Franklin at like 10 o'clock at night shooting dark scenes and stuff like that. It was just so funny. See, um, I wish I had footage of stuff like that because it's super low budget. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I love all that low budget shit where you're just like having fun because it, it, there's some things that oftentimes in those original cuts doesn't get caught in the editing. So it'll be like a little snippet that's like a golden moment. Yeah. Dude, there was yeah. a video like that when we were in college. When me, it was uh, me, Jake, Tabitha, Miguel. We made that music video for Tony. Mm -hmm. The dubstep music video, dude. We filmed that mm -hmm. at night at the college parking lot. Just like you got, you were talking about. That shit, it was like, wow. <laughs> but you guys did a good job with it. Their their thing was like kind of like a horror esque film or whatever. But I swear they did a really good job with it. It was it was like a thriller, like suspense type thing. Yeah, for oh, what it was, saying, yeah. it it definitely could have been like a low budget music video that was like <laughs> legit though. Like you know, like yeah. that first entry level bar, like where you're in the door. It was like that level. Oh yeah, yeah. I remember doing my my first. Uh music video projects and i mean just seeing the growth that you get every time oh, yeah. you step into a new project for sure too you're how did like, you get into film yeah so uh so i went to portland state i my mom she owned a theater department for or a theater company for like over a decade and so mm. I, i'd always been around like acting and whatnot so i kind of got my start in front of cameras and whatnot mm -hmm. um we we had a, a Broadway actor uh, that was teaching at Portland State for just like a year. And so I got to train underneath him for uh, that, the time that he was there. And then and I, cool. once I yeah. And then once I hit my sophomore year, uh, my my girlfriend, um, who's still my girlfriend today, uh, was just like, you should just get into film classes the way that you talk about film and everything like that. It just it makes sense. And so I got into that. The the Portland State film um, community or uh I don't know, film school isn't personally that great, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I basically got a degree in telling people why I don't like certain films or why I don't like them. You know, I've yeah, got, got a, a lot critics of degree. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, because I was a communications major and then a minor in film, they were very like they blocked you out of taking like 70% of the classes. Like I couldn't mm. even take a music video class. Like, and as you know, most people know, mm. that's like the least, that's the the best way to not make money in the film industry is by doing yeah. music videos <laughs> at the end of the day. So I was just like, wow, Portland state, you're not even letting me do the thing. That's like not going to get me anything in the, in the long <laughs> financially that's. And so uh, I came, I graduated and then, you know, you have that ultimate, like, I don't know, freak out moment once you're like done with school and you're just like, okay, what the fuck am I going to do now? And uh, I applied to 
uh, some internships and I, I got in with Providence Health and Services, the the hospitals around here. And um, I interned mm-hmm. with them shooting like surgery videos. Like I, I've watched like heart Whoa. transplants, brain surgeries. Like I, I've seen the whole I've seen it all as far as that stuff goes. Freaky shit, bro. What? (laughs) Yeah, and I don't know if you remember this. I was pretty known for passing out in class from like like fainting and shit like that. Like, uh, no, uh, I don't remember that, but that's epic to (laughs) turn it around. I worked hard. I, you know, I I just threw myself (laughs) in the deep end apparently, and uh, yeah. Yeah, and uh, while I was at school, I also met uh, Ian Fowler, who's like a award-winning filmmaker here in Portland, and uh, he and I just became really good friends, and um, nice. we worked on a script together, uh, we've shot a feature film together that's in post-production right now, Wait. and and uh, yeah, and then the Providence gig, that evolved as well, like uh, I'm basically running a, a cooking show out of Providence for people that have like food-based... Yeah. Pro- problems be it like diabetes and you know fixing your your diet can you know increase your life and get you off mm-hmm. of medications and stuff like that so like i i don't know i just got kind of lucky I, I got out of college and i i got kind of lucky just falling in with the right people Hmm. well dude that's awesome side mm-hmm. note before we go any further what's the name of the film uh punched after the fact punched after the fact okay yep. punched well, after I- the fact if if you have anything rolling for like uh, advertising or like marketing going, yep, let yep. us know. I got, I got you right now. Uh, we we just released our trailer last month. Uh, it's a uh, it's a pretty good trailer. It tells you nothing about the film, which was kind of the purpose. <laughs> like you know, like you know trailers, and you're just like, okay, I know everything about this film. Um, yeah. We we definitely tried to steer away from that. Uh, uh, should I just drop it in like the general chat or something yeah. like that? Uh, yeah, that works. Cool. So, um, so yeah, I, I did that, uh, the, the film, I've gotten to see it all the way through, not sound design. So, you know, it definitely Mm -hmm. has got some work, but, uh, yeah, I mean, we got lucky. Like, uh, we, we started fundraising as soon as like COVID hit, like literally the week that we went live with our fundraiser COVID hit and we had to like shut everything down. We, we made our budget, which was fantastic. We, we raised a a good amount of money to make the Mm -hmm. film, um, we raised something like $35,000 or something like that. That's awesome. yeah. And uh, then we had to shut down. And then, uh, so we really just got to sit for, you know, a year, just like nitpicking the shit out of our script and just getting it better and reworking it. And during That's that time awesome. period. Yeah. Yeah. And during that time period, I, I got to do those music video projects. I got hooked up with some guys and we're like starting this kind of like multimedia company out in uh, Brooklyn where we're just like doing live concerts every month uh, or once every two months and recording okay. it and releasing it on YouTube and stuff like that. If you want to check that out, that's called Rec Room. Um, Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I'm, I'm working yeah. a lot. I'm working a lot. <laughs> we're just about like having fun, talking with people letting them be who they are and promoting whatever they do. I so like if, if you got a hand in the pie, you know what I mean? Just let us know. And that that's an open invitation. Like yeah. down the line yeah. as you have stuff, this is going to get much bigger than it is. This is in its like yeah. infantile stages right now. I got it. I got it. There's Still a lot of building that's happening it. right now. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? It's going to start growing more and more as people that we have on you know take a bunch of pride in just being able to tell their story and to have something where it's like you know fucking elevator pitch these days yeah you know there's ways around it where it's like if you really want to find me and you can have a track record over time uh especially if you're like uh, who's who these days chances are there's some aspect of media that you can transfer to somebody you know And I think podcast is going to be a huge one because it's the only real like old school, long form, um, just raw medium. Yeah. Yeah. No, I completely agree. I I don't know if you guys saw this, but like um, I think this year podcasts officially hit more total streaming time than like videos. Um, I don't Mm. know how they have those numbers, but yeah, like like just this year is the first time it's ever surpassed those numbers or yeah, whatever. Uh, that's but so I totally agree. I think that's probably because when when people were doing like their COVID thing, I think there's an aspect of like Zen 
um, philosophy that like came to life. Like I, I, I remember I was watching a uh, Wayne Dyer speech. If you don't know who Wayne Dyer is, go look him up. He's amazing. But anyways, um, in it, he was saying something uh, to the effect of, God damn it, I lost it. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> we were going on a good ride. Where, where, what, what the hell were you talking about? Don't worry, Kemper is sick right now. We're just we're we're going with the punches <laughs> we're working right now. It. It's totally cool. Yeah, uh, I lost it. Let's hope this kombucha revives me. There you go. Brings you back to life a little bit. <laughs> uh, this is the first time I've ever been sick on 420. By the way, what the fuck? Yeah, I that's that sucks. Yeah, it does. I it, know. I'm house sitting right now. Uh, I'm I'm at my house right now, but I'd probably be lighting up with you. Yeah. I, had my stuff on me hey did you ever smoke weed in high school no i was a bitch back in high school <laughs> yeah you were most of the grindstone no i was just a bitch just in general <laughs> <laughs> um, well, at yeah, least you were cool though i appreciate it um yeah, yeah. no I'm, i mean my parents they they smoked from a, a young age so like i just had this weird perceived con- like or weird connection that it was like maybe my parents were different people when they were smoking and i don't know i just got wrapped up in this weird brain thing back in high school and then i I hit 18 and like my anxiety was just through the roof and somebody was just like smoke some pot homie and then i just did and i was like oh it doesn't change you at all this is perfect this is exactly what i did (laughs) (laughs) yeah dude you don't know until you know see that's kind of what happened to me i smoked some weed and just got lost in the bushes bro like mm-hmm. I swear, I smoked some weed and I was like, "They told me not to do this shit." I was like, first of all, pussy must be the bomb." <laughs> uh, and I think that was because my mom knew I was gonna have a field day. You know what I mean? Like ever since I was little, I always had little, like tons of little chicks when I was in school. Um, so I think my mom just did it as like a single mom, single parent, like preventative measure, just hoping this Jedi mind trick just like works. Makes sense. <laughs> makes yeah. total sense pretty much but like i swear although i always wanted to do media type stuff in high school there was really not, like no outlet to it like no one i knew until uh i think it was my junior or senior year my homie josh um josh gentry he was like help me on this film project and that was the first time anyone I knew had ever really like put a camera in my hand that wasn't like a still photography camera. And was like, bro, come check this out. So I didn't really think about it as like an option, even though I always wanted to get involved in it. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. I um I mean, we didn't have any film class, like real film classes at uh I mean, outside of just being like an English course at Franklin. Um, I mean, like, we were also going through school at the time where they were just like getting rid of every elective known to man like we were Mm -hmm. just going through such like heavy budget cuts and then we get to our senior year and they're like oh hey we're gonna rebuild the school i know we haven't had any finances (laughs) for like developing any cool classes for you guys to have for the last four years but we got this new school that you won't get to appreciate too so that's cool Um, yeah i remember looking at that like dude what that's what the school's gonna look like hey zach if we drove by franklin high school it's so different. Even like the way that the football field goes is different. Yeah. They change. Wait, when we, every- uh, I'm, never mind. I, I think we went past there at one point and you mentioned it. Do I don't yeah. remember what we were doing, but I think we went past there. I probably did because I yeah. think about it every time I drive past. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm now, saying. <laughs> now this looks like a tech school or something. You know what I mean? Shit, like too big for a high school. What is this? Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know if you've talked to any of the teachers since leaving. Um, maybe I just have a lame relationship like that. But uh, mm-hmm. they are all like, the new setup sucks. Like they they made it pretty and then did nothing to like make it effective as far as mm-hmm. like teaching and stuff goes. So I don't know. I, I think they essentially just like did the equivalent of slapping a new paint on it and then just calling her a day. Like <laughs> you know what I mean? It, yeah. yeah, they didn't get rid of like what they're teaching content wise. So I mean, there's yeah. still that huge gap. But hey, at least they did make it a damn good paint job. Like, <laughs> it, it is snazzy. It definitely yeah, looks it good. <laughs> If we're going on looks, that is phenomenal. 
Um, yeah, it was such a smart idea to turn the auditorium into a library. Like the we had like this huge auditorium that literally you'd never be able to fill even when all of the students were there. Like and so they were just like let's build a new auditorium and then let's just turn that old auditorium into a library and it actually looks kind of sick. That's cool. Yeah. I think uh side note that's crazy cuz I didn't know they did that. I haven't like toured it on the inside. Um, but no, I, I have seen some of the people that have taught us before, but that was back when I worked at the dispensary, interestingly enough. Oh, like, yeah. I was, oh, it was sure. always funny when I would run into someone that was like affiliated with me in high school and I would say the same thing to every one of them. I'd go, well, well, well. <laughs> and it's like the last thing you're like expecting to get hit with, especially when you come into an establishment, <laughs> yeah. you're usually on like a date night or something. So it's like yeah. so many aspects of their life that they can be <laughs> great at once. And I'm just, here it is, that bad kid you used to chase around. Yeah. Well, obviously, don't say it to me on air, but I want to hear who you've seen. <laughs> no, no, no. I the names have been protected to. Yep. yep what yep. is that? Change. <laughs> Change for the protection of the whatever. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's so names of the innocent. Because they were good people, I was like, oh yeah. And it's funny though, because like there's certain people I always knew smoked, and just the way that they handled me when I was oh, at sure. school. Because they never made me feel like I was bad. Yeah. Like, they would let me know, hey, you're doing foolish things. But they wouldn't say, you are foolish. Yeah, like, fucking up and being fucked up are two very different things. Domingo was like yeah. that. Yeah. D- Domingo was way, way cool. Yep. Um, They're, you know, Miss James, off tops. Yep. Hey, Miss James kept me out of out of some trouble before you know because but she treated me so fairly i'm not even gonna lie there was i went through phases of uh different vice principals and there was one that was just like super whack you know what i mean and i had just gotten in this huge fight and then uh i had a concussion and he was like sitting there telling me i was wrong and like trying to sting on me and bro i wasn't trying to hear it so I was like, you're a pussy, get your boss. <laughs> <laughs> and I was super out of pocket on that one. But I mean, I, I had oh, such a bad fuck. concussion, bro. I'm like throwing up in garbage cans. Like, I really can't talk shit to nobody. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, I had all the bad teachers at Franklin. Literally, if you had a checklist of all of the bad teachers, I, I checked off every single box, essentially. Oh, man. Like, you know, I don't want to name drop all of them, but Miss Bieber, for example, like she was, she was terrible. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, she so. wasn't getting any dick. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> like she had a military husband or something. Like it was actually kind of wild. Um, but no, hey, she was bro, like, her her husband probably drove truck to get the fuck away from her. <laughs> right. I'm sure she was nice to who she was nice to. Um, you know, she just got a weird power trip thing. Oh, yeah. And maybe she just needed some love. You know, like, if there's any students of Miss Bieber, give her a hug. Like, on credit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's the way the world works, though. You can't just on go credit. around fucking a bunch of kids' lives up, and then all of a sudden someone's supposed to make up for it. No. Yeah, did you hear about somebody peeing in her cup? Like, uh, Oh, yeah. I, I remember that back in the day. That That yeah. was foul, though. That was across the line, a hundred percent. See, that's what I'm saying, Zach. When I'm telling you, there's just wild shit that would happen at Franklin. That's oh, it's cool. he's in a cup. That <laughs> is in a cup. Bro. I mean, uh, I can't, I can't remember who the two people. And it were, was a girl, was... bro. That was the crazy. Thing. Oh, I know who. Like, I know the, who peed in the cup. The, I know the. I know the two individuals that were responsible for that for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, wait, I didn't know there was two. Now this is breaking news to me. <laughs> one peed in the bum, cup. Bum, bum, bum. One delivered the cup back to the table. Oh, it was a duo. Oh man. So someone was the hand the underneath. Switch. Uh, That's man. exactly right. That's exactly That's right. Filthy. She didn't drink it. 
She didn't drink it. They they got called out for it, so oh, okay. nobody worry about any I was like, sort no, of like. Everyone let her drink that. Damn. No, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no they let her know. That was okay. like in the yeah. Godfather where they put the horse's head in the fucking. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. She stopped giving out fucking hall monitor tickets for a week. She was just looking around. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I I never got detention in school, um, but I got detention in Miss Beaver's class consistently because she needed somebody to sweep her room. So like, freshman year, I shit you not, I had detention every single day. I, now did did I go time. every single day? I don't know. After a certain <laughs> amount of time, um, they stopped making me like check in. Yeah. And that was super cool. Um, I can't remember what her name was. Was it Miss Williams? Yeah. Yeah. Disciplinary Miss, lady. That, that name sounds familiar. Again, I, I didn't Williams really ever get in trouble much, but yeah. Yo, she was cool as shit. You know what I mean? Like, uh, just an older black lady that was just the most wholesome, loving lady. And she would let people come into her room. Like, she was so fun to just sit there and kind of bullshit with. Yeah. Um, that I like when I would show up to to school late too, she would be the person that I would have to check in with. So I'm already like caught. She knows that I'm here late, but I would never be like stupid late, I, or at least I wouldn't. Tr I would try not to be, you know. But first period, I was at least like ten to fifteen minutes late because eventually, bro, I just started walking to school because I was like, once I started smoking weed, I live like a straight line from Franklin, so I would just walk to school and smoke a blunt sometimes plans went smooth sometimes, sometimes they didn't, didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah makes sense makes sense um yeah no it's funny like when i think about like film projects and like i think about portland state or not portland sorry sorry that's where i went to college but uh franklin um there was this one video that i was doing because i was a part of link crew in my senior year to mm -hmm. get just you know some nice credit or for college or whatever Mm -hmm. And uh, I had to make a, a video about Franklin and like the athletics team. And I was speaking on behalf of like the baseball athletics team because I was on the baseball team. And yeah. I don't know if you remember, but Shaw was the, the coach for baseball. And no offense to that guy, but he's just the absolute worst coach on the planet. <laughs> um, and so like i was doing this video and i'm just supposed to be hyping the baseball team and i'm just like dead ass staring straight in the camera like i love the baseball team you should definitely join it like it is fantastic <laughs> like i'm just shaking my head no the entire time like don't do it this is the worst mistake you could ever possibly do and yeah it was just so funny watching that video back and just being like wow my my body language is telling a completely different story than what my mouth is saying <laughs> Now, I'm not sure if you remember this or not, but I was actually on the baseball team my senior year because whenever Joseph would like go to leave because we had last period together, I would just get up and go with him. And so all the teachers thought that I was like on the baseball team. <laughs> I wasn't on the it's baseball good, bro. team. You got that was, confidence. You, that's that's I was just go get baked and yeah. just go watch them play fucking baseball. <laughs> Dude, that's <laughs> epic. I would just be chilling right there with you guys. Like, there's no way that, like, Shaw could police it because he's got to go do his job. So I was kind of, like, in this weird, like, shh, don't ask, don't tell gray zone of just, like, being Ferris Bueller. <laughs> do, do you remember Zach at all? Mm, Entrican? I I can't remember his last name to save my life, but he was a year... He, he would have been two years older than me so i think a year older yeah um because I, I he was on the baseball team as well and i remember the day he got kicked out for of the baseball team he walks into the locker room and is just like dude i just smoked the fattest joint in the planet and then Sean <laughs> walks in right behind him and you're just like sack my man <laughs> oh, <fuck>. my man <laughs> everybody's face just went from like oh uh, Okay, this is not going well. And so yeah, now he was removed from the baseball team very shortly after. Hey, but still, he he was one of the OGs. Like there's a couple people um cuz he used to hang out with Damon a lot and uh mm -hmm. Joseph's older brother. And so it was an interesting thing because there's like that 2-year gap and my older brother is the same age as Damon and Zach and all of them, right? 
So it was like this weird overlap where even though my brother didn't hang out with them, it was like I was always around those people. Yeah. But like this was my like little niche group down here. Yeah. No, I totally feel you. Um, but yeah. before we go too much farther, yeah, let's go because we're getting off in the woods. I, I, who would have known that there was so much high school catching up to me? Oh, um, totally. But uh, film wise, stuff like that. Let's rein it back in. I did some stunt double stuff the other day. Yeah. And I'm telling you, I ate it on the first fall, but the rest of them were all good. Uh, just because I missed the little pad. But I got a little feature that I'm going to be a part of. I don't know what their working title is for it yet. Um, but they're getting close to wrapping on it. So I'll have that. And there's actually going to be like a little premiere for it. Have awesome. you thought about getting a premiere or anything for your guys' film? Yeah, so uh, Ian, the guy that I'm, Ian Fowler, the guy that I'm paired up with, uh, he, he's he he's won most of the film festivals here in Portland. So mm -hmm. we're we're looking at a uh, pretty like uh, we're looking at expanding our range. Um, so there's some film festivals that we're submitting to, like uh, San Francisco Indie Fest mm -hmm. and uh, Dances with Films, which is held out of the Chinese Theater off of Hollywood Boulevard. Those are those are our two main ones that we're trying to get into. Um, mm -hmm. Hopefully we can get into those. Then, you know, if we do and we show up and people like our film, there's a good chance that they could take us, you know, somebody could take us on to bigger, better things. But, um, mm -hmm. you know, that's just thinking positively, you know, chances are that might not happen. Um, but yeah, we're going to hit the film festival circuit first and we're going to hit it pretty hard. Uh, yeah. we, we missed out on most of the film festival entry dates for 2022. So, uh, and you know, the movie's still not complete yet. So uh, yeah, 2023 is going to be our year for sure. And we'll That's have a okay. uh, Portland premiere and stuff like that, but it'll all be after like, say if we do get into these, one of these large film festivals, they're all about having your film premiere at those film festivals. Yeah, first. So I guess. hopefully we get in there. Yeah. Hey, did you ever realize how long it takes to actually get projects to light? Yeah, yeah I mean, it, it's an interesting one because, like, if, if you have everything lined up perfectly, you can get a film done in a year at mm -hmm. the bare minimum. And then, mm -hmm. uh, then if you get hit by COVID, you have to wait two and a half years to get it completed. But, uh, <laughs> But yeah, no, it, it takes such a long time. I mean, from, from the writing process, I'm, I'm working on my own solo debut feature film where I'm solo writing and solo directing right now. Uh, it's mm -hmm. in the scripting phase. And, you know, I, I came out the gate hot with that. I wrote like 300 pages of rewriting the same script, X, Y, and Z, like in two and a half weeks. And I was just, you know, it, it hit me like a freight truck, just like how much energy that you have to put into those things. Cause I was hands on with the writing for punched, but I definitely wasn't the main writer for it. That was definitely Ian. And so mm -hmm. this one just being like, okay, I need you to sit down in front of the computer for four hours each day and try to write and make sure it doesn't suck. I don't have any tips for you, but just make it not suck. You know what yeah. I mean? It's one of those things that it's just like, you just have to study film uh how a film's format is how it's laid out like where the inciting incident should happen how it's like you know you have to learn all those rules before you can even attempt at breaking them but in the same right it's like films it's it's kind of a new medium at the end of the day like, film structure really that we've seen in western civilization until the 70s and it was still kind of getting figured out and then it was all formulaic in the 80s and then people started to try to break the formula a little bit in the 90s thus you get like fight club and some of these films that are just like you know like they still follow abstract. the film format but abstract as shit yeah exactly yeah. and um so yeah i mean like i think it's a really awesome time to be in film or be a filmmaker right now because i mean even from a like, if you don't want to be a, a filmmaker, like, going out and making movies, per se, but you want to do video work specifically, now mm -hmm. is the time. Like, you have all of these big companies or just, like, foundations in general that are all shifting from a, a written format to a visual format. So if you mm -hmm. can get in on the ground level of these things, like you know it's blowing up right now so I, I i feel very lucky i wish i would have been in the game like two or three years sooner 
Yeah, I think it's interesting, though, about film, or what is interesting about film to me, is that when it first came, like, first came out, it blew everyone away and has still continued to be, like, number one spot. But it's one of the only things that, although it has always had, like, an elitist aspect to it, um, as times progressed, it has, like, come down and become more of an open funnel where everyone can have a hand in it or to, to some capacity, whether they're actually out like documenting uh, films or making like narrative films, they, they have a camera and they're doing it. Even if it's just TikToks and little stupid boomerangs and shit like that, yeah. uh, you're, you're using it, you know? And I think the only other thing that's done that in, our culture is like hip hop, right? Sure. In the beginning, it was like if you were a rapper and you were like established, that was like royalty, and that's still like a thing. There's still levels to shit, but as it's gone on, it's like everyone's got their like place within it, and everyone's able to do it. Yeah, it's become community driven. Uh, it, it's it's there's a, a lot a lot larger community behind it, and it like you're saying it, it it's become less. Um, I don't know, hoity-toity or, uh, I don't know. Like, there's always been that distinction, like, there, there's a film and then there's movies, like the, the Marvel Civil, or the Marvel Universe or movies, just because they have them, like, coming out every two, like, every year they have, like, eight of them coming out. It's, like, mm -hmm. almost like the fast food of movies. I'm, that's not a personal opinion on, you know, if the Marvel mm -hmm. movies are good or not. But then you have what people, like, define as, like, films where it's like you know the lighthouse or this abstract shit that only people that are super into film will kind of understand or get and be mm -hmm. super excited about and i think those those levels are kind of like pulling away on on both of it because like i mean like kind of going back to the marvel thing um they have some really quality filmmakers that are coming through Marvel, like especially right now. Like Taika Waititi is probably, in my in my opinion, the best director uh, probably working today. Uh, just as far as like, I don't know, in introducing humor into plot that is very serious, or being mm. able to, dude's just masterclass. If if anybody hasn't seen Taika Waititi's movies, I highly recommend. Uh, Hunt for the Wilder People is just like one of the best films i've personally ever seen okay um, so i highly recommend that one but yeah it's it's really cool to just kind of film is hitting a place where you know you're kind of just allowing filmmakers to do what they are passionate about. and it's very exciting to see because in the early 2000s for example like when when horror movies were like having their all all time low it was just like they were making the same scream movie they were making you know friday the 13th 36 mm -hmm. like it was just all of the same things over and over and over again and then there was um cabin in the woods like i don't know if you guys remember cabin in the woods but that was like all about being like hey the horror format and how it's set up right now is so formulaic that you could guess everything that's going to happen and it's purely doing it because this is what the the uh production companies or the producers have deemed what the audience wants or whatever yeah. and then um, and shit. yeah and then uh mm -hmm. you you had films like the babadook or these these films in the early or like late 2000 like 2008 to 2011 where you started to have these indie filmmakers or you know big ish but not huge filmmakers taking mm -hmm. a new shot at horror movies and doing it in ways that were like all, more emotionally driven instead of just being like gore or like just being saw seven or whatever mm -hmm. like, and so it's just it's really cool to see all the different um blending that's happening in in film right now it's just it's so much fun to be on that road. now i'm not gonna lie i've never asked this question to zach either so i'm gonna throw this out here for both of you guys what are some films that um you love that got you into it and if they're all kind of like films that you think people would know maybe a couple include a couple on the side that are like lesser known that you found that were like gems because like i watch old movies bro sometimes i'll watch some of them 70s joints 60s joints bro 
and you'll just love it. And there's an aspect to it that's like fun because it's unrealistic. But if yeah. you allow yourself to kind of get lost in the fact that this is like old technology, it's really fun. And then like when you actually try to like decode in your own brain, like how would I actually do this shot? Because they had none of the shit that we had. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's like a testament to like practical effects, like when practical effects were uh, introduced into filmmaking. I mean, like you always had to have some sort of practicality, especially when you didn't have the technology for it. But like, I don't know, the original Star Wars movies, like they look better mm -hmm. than some of the new Star Wars movies coming out just from the fact that they use models and that they used like hyper focused cameras that they can just, you know, shoot these small little miniatures to make them seem bigger and better than life and so like those those scenes that they're fighting out in space in the spaceships like that's all just little models that they have on strings and they're just you know some guys yelling pew pew into a microphone like, <laughs> and it still it still holds up better than a lot of i don't know a lot of the practical or uh cgi that you see today yeah see i'm really glad that you um, clarified that yeah. last part because i definitely thought that you said they shot it through bottles and i was like how the fuck <laughs> i was like is that all i had to do is just put a <laughs> bottle in front of bro i would have been out here doing stupid shit trying to figure out how star wars came <laughs> yeah you take a wine bottle and you just stick it up yep. to your eye and then it just films magically and then Ooh, you just yeah. you you dump out the wine somewhere onto some sort of film and then it just makes your movie it's just yeah how easy it was back in the day mm -hmm. But um, yeah, but, film wise, what you thinking? Um, for me personally, uh, from a cinematography standpoint, like if I had to be like, what is one of the most beautiful scenes or films that I've ever seen? Sixteenth uh, century woman. Uh, it's an A twenty four film. Uh, it's a A twenty four. I mean, they they make great movies, but they're not always like you know, you know, worldwide or whatever. So if you haven't mm -hmm. seen that one, I highly recommend. Um. From a, a like a clever writing standpoint, I think Logan Lucky is one of the best movies that I've seen from a writing standpoint. It's um, it's about two redneck brothers who do a heist and steal from NASCAR in the South. It's incredible. It's uh, okay. Channing Tatum is actually gives like one of his best performances I've ever seen. Uh, usually you're just like, yeah, the dude from Magic Mike, but no, he yeah. like totally like dad bought it up like. And his acting is just incredible. It's got Adam Driver in it. Adam Driver's incredible. Like, literally, yeah. that, that film is so fun all the way through. And you have to watch it, like, three or four times to even understand how everything happened. Like, okay. one part in the film that takes place in the first five minutes where somebody, like, gets a bunch of rock dropped on them so they're like digging them out of this gravel and then they're just like we need to get into the office what's the code and somebody's like it's christmas and then two hours or like an hour and a half later when they're trying to break into the same establishment later he presses mm -hmm. you know 1225 or 1226 or whatever fucking guy christmas is and um you're just like how how did you know how does he know this code and it isn't until you rewatch the movie like one or more two more times where you're just like Oh, it's that little piece of information. And yeah. He's not even telling you what the code is. He's just saying it's Christmas. And <laughs> yeah. you're just like, wow, this is such a smart movie. Um, so mm -hmm. those are those are two big ones for me. Uh, I'm a big fan of uh, mafia movies. So, I mean, yeah. Goodfellas is fantastic. Obviously, most people have seen that. Um, but a, a good mafia movie that... I, I bet you a lot of people haven't seen is Miller's Crossing by the Coen brothers. Uh, it doesn't, okay. it doesn't feel like a Martin Scorsese film, which is mm -hmm. a, an attestament to the Coen brothers making a mafia movie that doesn't feel like Martin Scorsese is just all over it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, man, th those are the three that come to my mind. Um, maybe there's, there, there's this old, uh, it's not old, but it's from the '90s. Uh, it's called "Without Limits." It's about Steve Prefontaine. I, I don't okay. know, if you guys know who Steve Prefontaine is, but yeah, was, the runner. Yeah, the the track runner for Oregon. But mm -hmm. uh, Billy Kudrup starred in the role and whatnot, and that was like the first time when I was a little kid, like I felt some sort of like emotional impact from a movie. Like I used to watch that before like my middle school baseball games because it would get me psyched. 
a movie yeah. about a track runner who's doing <laughs> an independent non-team sport got me so pumped to go play baseball or whatever. I'd watch it before every game. So, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of film has just been tap dancing around my life for a very long time. So it's hard yeah. to narrow it down to, like, you know, a select few. But those are the first few that come to mind. Hell yeah. Did you ever see the movie uh, City of God? It's like uh, about the slum in like I think it was Brazil, um, and this was like back in the day, and no one could get into like the yes. slum. Yes, yes, I have seen this. Yo, that's like one of the most beautiful movies, um, and it was a combination of like everything. It had like gangster aspects to it. Yeah, it puts you in the mind state of a child because this kid that's like documenting everything, and it was a true story. Um, was actually like a young boy in this neighborhood and he was the only one that could get the like stories out and all of a sudden the gangsters fell in love with like having their stories told this kid thought he was going to get killed for this shit you know yeah and then they were like nah you're with us now and it's just about him like rolling with gangsters but the way they shot it the color palettes and everything mm -hmm. it, it is a beautiful movie yeah, I'm looking at images of it right now. It really reminds me, uh, I mean, it came out before, so, uh, but American Gangster with Denzel. Uh, like, I love you can that see, movie. Yeah, you can see how, uh, like, they shot it similar. Because, like, what, I, what I've really enjoyed about, like, 2000s African-American films is, like, usually when you're setting up lighting for a movie that's starring white people, it's usually like the, the background is all dark and then the foreground is light. So you can light up a white person's face really easy. It's kind of easier to control the lighting from that standpoint, but mm -hmm. for African American filmmaking, they flipped it on its head. So when you look at like Django Unchained or um, city of God or, you know, American gangster, like mm -hmm. it's all dark in the forefront and then it's blown out sun blown out image or lighting mm -hmm. in the background it's very interesting and I, i'm a big fan of like how that cinema in that time period really just like yeah flipped it on its head mm -hmm. zach are there any things that pop up in your head film wise um i mean dude i remember some old movies like i was stuck on uh the old sandlot the very first sandlot movie Fuck yeah. Hell Such yeah. a good Fuck Sandlot yeah. movie, bro. Yeah. I, dude, I'm six, so I'm, my brother's six years older than me, and I used to mm -hmm. have a shirt that was just like Benny's in the movie, and I'd make mm -hmm. my brother play the beast, and we would make a mm -hmm. fence out of my, out of like the couch cushions and shit. Mm -hmm. Dude, I was I love that movie. That's I a love fantastic that movie. film. Yeah. Um, this is like a, there's this movie called The Langoliers. It's what? super, bro. I think, I think it's a Stephen King movie, but okay. they basically go on this airplane into like another dimension. They land, Whoa. and there's That's... no one at the airport. There's nothing. Everything's gone bad. Everything, and then there's these like weird little balls of moving teeth that eat. You're everything. right. It is Stephen King. Yeah. yeah. So, I w I was into that as a kid. It's actually a mini series. Yeah, I so they yeah. they did the miniseries and then combined it to to just yeah. be like a movie. Yeah, yeah, that mm -hmm. makes sense because during the '90s they were doing that with so many of Stephen King's work. Like that's like Rose the Tim Red Curry it that we all know. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. I swear, like movies has always been a like a pivotal part of my family because when I was little, uh, especially like when my mom and dad broke up, that was like one of the things that was like a go to that we could all do together and like agree upon. Rambo is dope as fuck. <laughs> you and I have a similar similar experience with that. Yeah. Yeah. So like from the time that I was little, like that's what we would do. Even if we went out to like grandma's house, like we're gonna kick it and pal around, go and do stuff. But at night, when we all like come together, it's like get the Movie popcorn. Time. We're just watching some savage ass movies. You know what I mean? Yeah. So really, most of my like entry into film wasn't uh like the beautiful stuff it was just the epic 80s yeah. and 90s like action mo movies you know yeah um but there were little ones that i remember like dances with wolves mm -hmm. yo that movie is fucking beautiful like beautiful 
And I remember my mom would watch that shit. And that, there's like certain things that stood out to me. And I remember literally being captivated just looking at like the planes and like the horses and stuff. I was just like. Yeah, no, I mean, when when you have a great cinematographer, or you have somebody that just <clears throat> understands how to use a camera. And um, there's this great YouTube channel called Every uh, Frame of Painting. It's de it's a dead channel now, but he, he used to go in and just like break down every single scene and why like this popped or that popped. And it was really it was really cool to see. But that's something that we've taken into like our filmmaking now, uh, at least mm -hmm. on my squad or team anyways, it's like. Every time we we set up the camera, we we attempt to make every frame a painting, um, mm -hmm. and yeah, I mean, I don't know if you guys have seen the new Batman movie, uh, not yet. But you're you're like Nostradamus, bro. I was just gonna ask <laughs> you that. Uh, it's unbelievably well shot. I mean, mm -hmm. from a from a filmmaking standpoint, like twenty percent, like with purpose. And you're just, yeah, God, you're just blown away by what they were able to accomplish. And um, for making, like, trying to create a city that feels unlike anything else that you've ever seen, like, they did such a good job to make this, like, make Gotham just feel like an absolute shit show. Like, <laughs> and, you, and you've never felt that really in the other Batman movies. Like, when The Dark Knight, you're like, oh, I'm in Chicago. Uh, yes. I, I'm on a, I'm on a plane and I am seeing Chicago where this one you're just like, oh, I, I don't want a vacation here. Um, frankly, take me to Atlanta or take me to any of these other notoriously like not good cities, because frankly, I'm going to have a way better time there than I will in Gotham because this place just sucks. <laughs> yeah. See, what I thought was interesting was everything looked like some kind of like ancient cathedral. Like, yeah. Yeah. They shot it in Glasgow. Yeah, like when you're looking inside of everything, I was like, wherever they went to shoot that was super dope. Yeah, um, yeah, Glasgow, Scotland. Um, it, it's one of the oldest cities in in Scotland, as far as I understand. But it's the only place in really you could ever go and see like gothic architecture mixed with high rise buildings and modern architecture. So like, yeah you'll be at a cathedral and then look across the street and see, you know, a high rise, you know, business complex or some mm -hmm. shit. And you're just like, where am I? <laughs> yeah. See that that's one thing that's way cool about it. I was like kind of tripped out at first. I wasn't crazy about how the mask looks sometimes, which I know is like goofy, but I got over that like halfway through the film. I was like, man, it started looking like normal to me. I was like, that kind of does look like, but I thought it almost looked like too low budget for Bruce Wayne. But the rest of his suit was like baller as fuck. But his helmet was kind of thrown off. He had a bummy helmet. Yeah, what's it, what's interesting is like with Matt Reeves' interpretation of the character, he he's very much like, how can I make it like where Batman relies so little on anything that Bruce Wayne has? Like that car looks self-built because it's supposed to be the suit looks self-built because it's supposed to be. I mean, it literally looks like a piece of leather that he stitched to his head. Like he just put a piece of leather on his head and, you know, in a mirror, tried to sew that shit to his head. Like I, I, I think it's just it's really cool the the universe that he was able to build and I mean I'm a big Batman fanatic I've been since I was a little kid like you're kind of talking about like with your parents splitting and whatnot like when my parents split when I was like three I like I connected to like Batman Beyond and connected mm -hmm. to like Batman the animated series like I I, yeah. I launched into that stuff so hard and um, watching this movie and you're you're just watching it and you're like i'm watching batman the animated Ad adventures in live action this is really weird and it's awesome yeah it's funny that you say that i would have never guessed that we'd have that in common but i remember like literally when batman beyond came out and they had like the toys at like burger Hell King. Yeah. i was fucking with that i had those toys for a long time oh yeah yeah no i completely agree uh i i would love to take a stab at writing a batman beyond movie or just like being on any sort of sort of team behind that because yeah. i don't know if you know the story about like be, like the production side of batman beyond but like they were essentially like 
Batman's too dark. We need a way to make a show that kids can get into the Batman character that's not just through Robin. So I want you to make a show about a teenager being Batman. And they're just like, well, that kind of defeats the whole purpose of the character in the sense mm -hmm. of like he, he goes to train from like, I don't know, 18 to 30 uh, to become the world's best everything. So now they're just like... They, they basically just dropped this impossible task on this creative team. And then they came up with something just absolutely gold. Like that, yeah. that's that team. So good. Yeah. Hey, did you play video games when you were growing up? Hell yeah. Yeah. Cause I remember like, that was one of the things that pushed me towards um, like superheroes extra hard. Cause mm -hmm. on N64, like fucking the Spider-Man game that they came out with back in the day. Did you play the super, sh or the super shitty Superman game that is like notoriously known for being like one of the worst games of all time? Yeah, yeah. Uh, attempting a lot of video games because I was so young. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and the controllers were weird as shit, but they were cool. Um, yeah. But no, like then that second generation of consoles for at least my lifetime. They came out like the GameCube and stuff. They had incredible games. That Incredible Hulk where you could like free roam around and shit. Mm -hmm. The Spider-Man game where they allowed you to do that. Like yep. they had a ton of different superhero games that were just like bananas with it. And it was so much fun. And it's funny because like you can even look at how that's influenced games and mm -hmm. like Assassin's Creed. That would have never came out if it wasn't for like um, Spider-Man 2. And you look at the way the combat move like within that game. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and then you look at the combat system for the Batman Arkham games like that. That combat system has been used in, I don't know, just about every single game. It feels like since that game came out, like uh, mm -hmm. be it the the, um, the new Spider-Man games basically have the same combat system uh, and same with uh, the, the Lord of the Rings games, like the shadow of war and battle for middle earth and stuff like that. Like, uh, yeah, I mean, superheroes super influential right now. Mm -hmm. Yo, no, like this is really a weird pivot, but I don't know yeah, why pivot. it's popping in my head. I have to say it. Um, what have you learned about love in life? since high school like what are what is your like grand philosophy and pearls of wisdom for uh anyone that's starting out on that adventure maybe not necessarily in the film but just investing themselves into anything yeah um so these last year and a half two years it's been definitely a life-changing one um I, I got to do some incredible work with like i don't know i guess you guys have seen entourage but i got to work with Vinny chase the the lead or uh adrian granier but uh he played Vinny chase um i got to shoot for like andrew schultz and everything and it it all came off of this catalyst of I, I hit this point where um i had these friends um that were anytime i was excited about something they very much was like why is this stuff not happening for me and like it became very much like i'm having issues because i'm seeing your success and mm -hmm. it's hard to come to that realization when you have these friends that you've been friends with for over a decade and you want to pull them through and you want to pull them into all these cool projects that you're doing but something's happening i mean so i guess i'm really just boiling it down to is like there's people in your life that hold you back and as shitty as it is to let those people go you need to let those people go because the the it's just it's gonna make so much weight and levity come off of you it's gonna allow you to just fully deep dive deep into who you're who you are as a person yourself because like with these people too, like they had a lot of problems and I, I had a, I had a point where like, I was so externally focused on ev all the issues that they were going through. Like I was avoiding any sort of issue that I had internally. And so like, as soon as I, I pushed those people out, literally everything turned around for me. And it, it's a weird one. Cause it's not, you know, I, I don't like giving it the advice of like, Hey, fuck your friends. But like, mm -hmm it's recognizing who's your friends and who are the people that are going to wish to see you succeed in life. 
Mm. And I got to be around people that were, you know, not filmmakers, but are like, most of my friends now are like in their thirties and they're like, I, I need to do something that is creatively uh, speaks to me, but allows me to make money off of it. And yeah. so I, I surrounded myself with a bunch of people like that, that were just like, we're all here for the main purpose of having our art be sustainable for us living. And mm -hmm. so once I just got into that group of people and just got to see what that creative energy looks like and what that flow looks like, it, it turned life around for me, I, like a, a thousand percent. So yeah. take inventory. I, maybe that's just the bland way of saying it, but take inventory of what you got and what's holding you back and what's, you know, what, what you're what you're good at. I mean, I, I went through a lot of self-esteem issues growing up. I mean, I don't know if you remember, but I was like fairly heavy back in high school. Mm -hmm. And then I got that back injury. Uh, my junior year would have been the year that you graduated. And mm -hmm. I gained like 30 pounds. And then when I college and gained another 30 pounds, I was like 238 pounds. And um, I, I shed 80. Yeah, thank you. I shed 80 pounds off and like, yeah, just started to just look internally and just focus on who I am as a person and what I like about myself and just lean into that. Mm hmm. So hey. that's the, that's the best advice I could give. Yeah. Um, in terms of like transformation, isn't it funny how it's like, yeah, you put on 60 pounds, but when you made something back, like your efforts took you to like 80 pounds, you know, yeah. so you actually lost weight from where you even started from. Yeah. Yeah. I weigh less now than I did in middle school. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. I was 195 in my last year of middle school and I'm like down to like... 169 175 now yeah nice would have been really nice for baseball i would have not been <laughs> called speedy because uh, i was so slow yeah well you know what man you can't be everything all no. the time and sometimes we want to be like in that position when it's not ours you know yeah. like and it took me a long time to recognize that i was a storyteller yeah because really what I was to me was like a survivor and like why I'm a character is like why I'm goofy and all these kind of things is like, that was like my survival tactic, you know, my way to like forget everything was to just immerse myself with people yeah. and to try, try to figure people out and make them laugh, you know, see if I could understand who that person is, you know, yeah. and I didn't realize that it was like training for things down the line, you know, and I, I, it took me a long time to recognize, like, sometimes you're in a situation that you aren't of, and you're planted there. Yeah. And, and it's like, I was listening to a TD Jake speech, and he said, when you're planted, it feels like you're buried. But you're not, it's for a different reason. And if you go through that process, you know, the rain's going to come and that's not your job. But when that rain comes on that seed and it finally comes to fruition, like once you start blooming, there ain't no stopping that bitch, you know? Yeah. I'm yeah. I mean, last part, a whole bunch. <laughs> <laughs> Bishop uh, didn't tell that bitch. And, you know, maybe this isn't how you see yourself, Comfort, but I definitely like we weren't in a lot of circles together. We were probably pretty disconnected in our high school experience. Besides we knew each other, but mm -hmm. you always seemed like a super positive person, which is <laughs> something that I think is really important. And not a lot of people have is like just applying that positive mentality to something. Cause like, yeah. again, like you and I went through some similar stuff. It sounds like as far as like divorce and parents and all that stuff goes. Mm -hmm. And just like two years ago, I had somebody be like, no, your life like was shitty. And it was like really like it felt really nice to hear somebody actually say it. But then you started to be like started to fall into that victim mentality of wanting to hear everybody be like, no, your life sucks. And I get why you're in the shit position that you are right now. Yeah. And it's like, how do you not fall into that, too? And just be like, I'm the victim guy. And mm -hmm. like, I went through two months of that and I was like, okay, now I need to stop talking about my trauma. Cause I've just been talking about it for six years and I need to just move on and work on the things that like make me better. Mm. Yeah. But 
I don't know if you experienced any of that because again, you're super positive. So it seems like you could have just like totally skipped that whole phase that I went through. <laughs> Bro, I feel like I've had so many like recurring dark nights of the soul, you know, and like mm-hmm. different things. Like, because I'm a very, you know, Lil Wayne said something that was, they explained it really well. He said, I'm a lover, not a liker. So it's okay. like, if I do something, I'm going to do it with love. Yeah. I'm not going to just. I'm not halfway about a lot of shit and it doesn't have to make sense to people, but like when I invest, I'm invested and it's just for whatever reason. Um, and I've chosen to invest based on my intuition, despite, um, like I've gone into losing situations where I knew it wasn't like a profitable place to be in. You know what I mean? In terms of like this relationship, but it's also like, would I turn my back on this situation? I've had a lot to learn in terms of like um, boundaries and accepting guidance, you yeah. know, because guidance is always there. Now it can come from a stranger, you know, anything. God can give you guidance in all different kind of ways, bro. And, but it's going to make sense to you, whatever it is, you know? So like you could be an atheist and God could send you a sign. But it's not going to look like what your sign would look like if you're, I don't know, a Muslim or something like that. It might just be yeah. different for you. But yeah, the it's all about how you look for it. Yeah. Yeah. And like over time, um, even if that answer doesn't come from the person, it'll come from your pondering it. And as you begin to tell your truth, you know, now whether you believe in in a higher power or whatever you want to say, if you're just saying it out loud, all I know is it happens when you take an intentional stance of like wanting to unpack your Mm -hmm. inventory, you know, and you get to like an event and you turn around and you're like, damn man, how, um, how I felt about this was this way. And then once you get that out of you, It's like the next thing that comes, it's like, well, what happened? It's like, all right, in black and white terms, this is what actually happened there, right? And this is the secret part. Now, your spirit reaches up and and grabs this, this thought, this just divine conscious thought. And it's like about why you went through it. And once that purpose aspect comes, it takes this pain and makes it pleasurable, And it makes it like a badge of honor because all of a sudden you can look back and be like, you know, that person didn't know how it was going to affect me in this domino effect of like ways, but it transpired for, for a good purpose. Yeah. You know, and I can see that now because it may not have been the way I would have enjoyed, um, going, but Although, although the route was less enjoyable, it was still worth it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, as long as you're able to look back and be like, I know why I am the person I am today and I enjoy that person. Um, everything else just kind of falls into place. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's very much like I, I went through all of these traumas and tribute or traumas and tribulations or whatever. But as long as I it made me the person I am today and I'm confident about who that person is, I think it's, you know, I wouldn't change anything. Fuck yeah, dude. And you shouldn't because like, you've always been cool. See, like when I was little, um, it's funny saying when I was little and I'm talking about high school, but like when we were in high school, um, I would always be a cherry picker of people. Like I've always collected certain people. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I might not be friends with everybody that you're friends with. They might not think the same as me, but if you're cool as shit, bro, I don't care. You're cool as shit, you know? And, um, I may not respect everything that you do or something, but it's like, and I'm not saying this in your case, but just in general terms. Oh, I'm life, being hurt. My feelings are being hurt right now. <laughs> <you're saying> <laughs> but you know, like in general terms of life, it's like you don't necessarily have to stand behind every single decision because how can you? Yeah. You know, no one can make enough decisions to please everybody. But if yeah. somebody is is cool, and especially if they're just showing up, like 
Because at that stage in our life, I feel like I was someone that showed up in a way where people didn't realize I was uncomfortable. You know, and so I was like an extra big um, personality, presence, you yeah. know, to make sure that people wouldn't necessarily be peeking at me quite as much. And if they did, I'd, I liked it because I could kind of spar with them verbally. Yeah, you put on that mask almost like there's a communications term that I learned in uh, my studies where it's just like we all have these roles or masks that we put on that adapts us to any certain circumstance. Like there still might be aspects of you or who you are as a person that's still inside of that. But mm -hmm. like when I was on the sports team, I, I was completely different than who I was hanging out with my normal friends at Franklin. Like those that might have well been a completely different person like yeah. looking back. And it's just like, yeah, it's, I, I totally feel you. And um, yeah, like I was saying, I, I'm hurt uh, that you didn't pick me up for one of that crowd because we, <laughs> we, we didn't hang out much much. <laughs> yeah, I would have been a bad influence. You would have been smoking weed, me, Joseph, and you. You, uh, you. you know, Joseph gave me the scar underneath my eye, right? what yeah i love the guy it's it's all love it's all love um, <laughs> and it's it's not even something that i blame on joe it, it's actually more that i blame on shaw uh, our coach but um yeah yeah uh i had this really gnarly cut underneath my uh my left eye after a baseball game because we we had a signal to fake throw it down to first base which and baseball just makes no fucking sense to me. Like yeah. if you're going to fake a throw, you fake a throw and then you don't throw it. Like, why do you need to alert everybody else that that's what you're doing? So mm -hmm. he, Joe didn't give that signal and that's fine. But because we had that set up, I bit on the, on the fake throw. So I looked over to first base and then yeah. I just hear Joe go, okay. And I look back and I just see, baseball coming straight at me and it just hits me you know right here underneath the eye i fall back i'm on the pitcher's mound i i'm hopped up on adrenaline i feel fine i sit up and i see both teams like dugouts run yeah. like coaching staff run out and be like no 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 and um yeah i had to go get six stitches uh which was ironically the same number as my jersey i you know what, what? i i was bleeding all over the place but our jerseys were maroon so you couldn't tell anyways hey. like it all lined up <laughs> oh, yeah. it all lined up yeah i'm gonna have to tell him he's a piece of shit next time i see him i'm gonna say joseph you shithead i so actually was told to come over here by gabe <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't put that on don't put that on me i love that guy <laughs> <laughs> i still need to have him on here you know there's just so many cool people that we had you know not only within high school but just people that i've just bump shoulders with in my my little walk through life yeah. and i've just really enjoyed being able to give them a platform to speak their truth and everything um and dude you really killed it i gotta say you're a great speaker too well uh, thank you i went to i went to college for it so i'd hope that i got some i got some uh something out of it but no i really appreciate you saying that man um i i've had a a great time coming on and um yeah if you got a hold of joe i'd love to i'd love to kick it back with you guys sometime hell yeah well we'll be sure that we get in touch with you because i i do go over to his house fairly regularly oh okay yeah um but otherwise is there anything that you would like to promote you know any social medias or anything uh before yeah. we get out of here yeah, so if you want to follow uh, my personal stuff, you can find me at G Lakey Video, G L A K E Y Video uh, on Instagram. Um, I, I also have a website, uh, ArcticFilmStudio.com. If you look that up, you can find some of the projects and all the different stuff that i've done um but from a, like a main promotional side i would say yeah go check out uh the the trailer for my movie punched after the fact all you have to do is just you know type into google punched after the fact trailer it'll come up and um yeah and go check out the rec room uh that that's the that's the music project that i got going uh out in brooklyn and we're hoping to do shows all around so um yeah Highly recommend checking out that stuff. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Gabe. You are amazing. I hope you have an awesome rest of your night. Thank you. Uh, you as well. Go yeah. enjoy 420. Yes. For real. <laughs> My lungs can take it. We'll see.
Absolutely. Well, yeah, guys, thanks for having uh, reaching out. Yeah, Kemper, it was super. It was super surprising to hear out or hear from you, but uh, super yeah. great. Had a lot of fun. Hell yeah. Well, until next time. Later, guys. Later. Later.